In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. From Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, who has been called to be an apostle and specially chosen to preach the good news that God promised long ago through his prophets in the scriptures. This news is about the Son of God, who, according to the human nature he took, was a descendant of David. It is about Jesus Christ our Lord, who in the order of the Spirit, the Spirit of holiness that was in him, was proclaimed Son of God in all his power through his resurrection from the dead. Through him we received grace and our apostolic mission to preach the obedience of faith to all pagan nations in honour of his name. You are one of these nations, and by his call belong to Jesus Christ. To you all, then, who are God's beloved in Rome, called to be saints, may God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ send grace and peace. The Word of the Lord the Lord has made known His salvation. Sing a new song to the Lord, for He has worked wonders. His right hand and His holy arm have brought salvation. The Lord has made known His salvation. The Lord has made known His salvation, has shown His justice to the nations. He has remembered his truth and love for the house of Israel. The Lord has made known his salvation. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, ring out your joy. The Lord has made known his salvation. Alleluia, alleluia. Because of your love, give me life, and I will do your will. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. This proclamation taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The crowds got even bigger, and Jesus addressed them. This is a wicked generation. It is asking for a sign. The only sign it will be given is the sign of Jonah. For just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. On Judgment Day, the Queen of the South will rise up with the men of this generation and condemn them. Because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and there is something greater than Solomon here. On Judgment Day, the men of Nineveh will stand up with this generation and condemn it. Because when Jonah preached, they repented. And there is something greater than Jonah here. The good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are familiar with traffic signs, aren't we? Stop, go, give way, merge, caution, children crossing. They keep traffic going smoothly. They help us arrive at our destination and avoid collisions. In short, they save lives. But are we familiar with the term, the signs of the times? We seem to 
know the highway code. We know that it's made up of climate change, digitalization, fake news, artificial intelligence, wider and wider income disparities, obsessive individualism, privatization of faith, unbridled consumerism, corruption. Yet in navigating our spiritual lives and putting faith in action, looking at the signs of the times, we often drive without paying much attention to them and the dangers ahead. There's a high probability we can miss the turns and not get to our destination, save for the mercy of God. In today's Gospel, we are told that we are a wicked generation asking for one more spectacular sign and ignoring the signs already given. The sign of Jonah was the mercy of God when we repent. The call to reform and repentance. There was no spectacular sign that King Solomon worked. The sign of Solomon was the wisdom of his words, and that made the Queen of the South rise, make the grueling trip from Ethiopia to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Do we allow the Word of God to help us navigate our journeys? Or do we just live allowing all these things to just take place, not pondering the wisdom of the gospel to guide us. The wildly imaginative book of Jonah pokes fun at the kind of prophet who begrudges salvation and mercy for others, wanting it only for oneself. Well, can you blame him? The Ninevites were part of the Assyrian Empire who destroyed the ten tribes, northern tribes of Israel and brought widespread destruction on the south to Judah. Looking at the signs of the times, Jonah was asked to preach repentance, to bring the mercy of God to them. Thankfully, he eventually did. They repented and they were saved. We who have Christ, his word, baptized in him, we too are invited to be that messenger, to be that prophet, but not begrudgingly. We don't just have the highway code, we have the driving instructor with us, allowing us to engage with the signs of the times, with him by our side, helping us guiding us to see that in our simple ways, like Jonah, we are asked to be generous, to be generous to show the mercy of God and bring others along the way so that we may all reach our destination through simple acts of love and service, we too proclaim the mercy of God. So let us then, in the communion of saints, pray as Jesus taught us for the coming of the kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment of your word, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless us, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go. Engage with the world and announce the good news. Thanks be to God.